it is time for Around the 412 with Smitty and Tyler. Welcome back to another episode of Around the 412. As Josh said, I am Tyler. Joining me today is my co-host, Smitty. Also joining me today is my other co-host, Zachary Smith. And lastly, joining <laughs> me is also my co-host, Zachary Smith, PGH. You can follow us on, on our social medias at Around the 412, um, as well as our, our personals. I figured I, I shouted out Zach's. So I'll shout out mine, Wilder underscore Tease 33. Um, and then while you're there, you can go check out our pin post on X and you can go check out the link in the description of each of these shows, whether you're on YouTube or a listening platform. We've got year six of Rocket Around the 412 kicked off. And if you listen to the Steelers episode, you know that we've been able to raise over $30,000 over the first six years, including this year, to be able to help children in our local 724 and 412 area codes and partner with the East Rochester Salvation Army to adopt kids off of their angel tree. And we've been able to do that with the help of all of you. So if you're interested, you can still donate. The the By the time that this episode comes out, it'll be almost, you'll, you'll have like hours to be able to donate for, specifically for the Salvation Army. So if you get ahead of it and you still want to go to get in for that one, you can still donate there. But um if you want to just donate to the general GoFundMe, that will still be active until December 11th. We've got a hard cutoff for December 11th. That way we can know who we're buying for, what we need to buy for them, and figure things out there. And so we're going to be able to uh, do that with the help of everybody. So if you want to continue to donate, do it. The link is in the description. It's also our pinned post on X, as well as a couple of the links that we have in the description is uh, Facebook and an Etsy link for Haley Wagner's small business. She's our friend. It's everything custom designs. And little did I know, you can get a customized Christmas bag, kind of like a like a Santa's bag for your gift. Um, like a Santa a, sack, yeah. A Santa sack. You can get you can get a customized one of those. You can get a customized stocking that we've talked about. We weren't sure if that were going to be. Unfortunately, you can't get a customized Santa hat because um, she's still cucking us on the hats. But even if you don't want any Christmas stuff, you can still get some 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 Christmas uh, T-shirts and stuff. But if you don't want any Christmas stuff, you can get sports stuff, you can get Pittsburgh stuff, really anything. Just reach out to her. See if she can do it for you. It's called Everything Custom Designs for a reason. It's just not a damn hat. Yeah, everything but hats, custom designs. Um, also, if you weren't watching on YouTube, yeah, I was, you're I was very, impressed by your If you're opinion. very confused by the intro for this Penguin show, um, just just go peek the first 30 seconds of the YouTube video and you will understand <laughs> why I introduced it, introduced it that way. I'm not giving any mean. hints. I'm not giving a- anything away as to why it was like that, but y- y- just go to the YouTube and you'll find out. Yeah. Um, man, I don't even know where to go from here. Um, well, I would definitely show. go back it's and probably watch. hockey. Yeah, I would definitely go back and watch that first 30 seconds. Why that happened, no clue. I had to go into StreamYard, which is what we used to down uh, to do the show, to download the video file for the Steelers show. And I was like, oh, let me hop into the room again on a second Man, tab. I told, I told them I wasn't going to give it away. Well, that's how it happened. And I did it again. So, Yeah, there were three um, cities. How many games have the Penguins even played since we last talked? No show last week because of Thanksgiving. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving. Um, but with that being the case, they've played a good amount of hockey games here. Um, they have. What was the last game we would um, talk about? I'm trying. And we recorded to on a Monday the previous week because of I believe the I believe that it was that Columbus Blue Jackets game at Columbus. <laughs> Yeah, so they've played a lot of hockey since then. Um, yeah, yeah, they have. Um, they've they've played what seven games, and they've Jeez. gone loss, loss, win, loss, loss, win, loss. So I'm expecting the next game to be a loss at Tampa Bay, just to keeping up with that pattern. Um, not not an overall great stretch. Um, no, for for well, the Penguins since we last talked. Yeah, and we saw you know Ricard Raquel long term IR. Um. We don't know how Not much like time he was doing anything anyway. Yeah, but you look at their their options <laughs> was, on the right wing. That was, that was harsh. That was yeah. Uh, you look at their options on right wing when he's not there, and it's I, still missed. I think. Yeah, we absolutely. Were waiting for absolutely. him to go in. Uh, but Brian Russ missed some time too. He's now back in the lineup. 
uh, scored a goal in his return to the lineup. Russ Dash but, has been in full force, by the way. Yeah, he's been awesome this year, which is great to see him Front of the bounce show. back the way that he has. Um, but yeah, it's been you know up and down. Can't seem to find their footing. The power play, man. I feel like we're reaching a new low every single time that it is on the ice. I mean, they're over their last twenty now. I <laughs> what what is it like with the amount of talent they have? It, it's not easy enough for any of us to have just a simple fix. It, it's schematically, it's broken. The question is, you know, how do you get to a point where not only is it helping the team, but like right now it's not even staying like it is actively hurting them. Not only is it not helping, it is actively hurting them to be on the power play right now, which makes no amount of sense. When you talk about Sidney Crosby, Kenny Malkin, Eric Carlson, Jake Gensel, Brian Rust, Riley Smith, Chris Letang. Ricard Raquel went healthy. There are, there are too many weapons on this team for this power play to be as bad as it has been. I, You got to think, very similarly to the Steelers making a move to tie it back to football here with Matt Canada. When do we get to that point with Todd Reardon? I think we should already be at that point. I... I, I think we probably should have already been at that point in previous seasons, not not just this one. But to have the additional talent that we have, that's even yeah. more scrutiny for this power play. Currently, the Penguins have a power play percentage of 12.07, and that somehow has six teams behind them with having a power play percentage that low. The teams behind them include Calgary, Columbus, Philadelphia, St. Louis, Chicago, and dead last in the NHL with a power play percentage of 5.6% is the Washington Capitals. Jeez. Man, yeah, Obi's really just not Obi. scoring from his spot this year. Yeah. That's that that, that must be it. Obi's goals have been going down and and the power play for the Capitals is going down with it. But yeah, the talent that Pittsburgh has on the power play alone, I feel like should be at least close to league average. You're not even close to league average. You're not even around 20%, which is like probably just looking at this graph, like, and, 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 and mm-hmm. not counting the teams out around 20% is league average. They can't even do that. And whenever you are expecting at least on a season level right now, you. but what the stats are saying is one out of every 10 times they have a power play they're going to score, except it's even worse than that because the power play has been getting worse and it's going to continue to die because they're over for the last 20. It has been yeah. getting so bad, and I think you need to have a point. Even if you don't like necessarily get rid of Todd Reardon, if he's still on the staff, take that away from him. Give it to somebody else. Or maybe Mike Sullivan needs to take that over himself because and put an emphasis on it because of how bad it's been. Because of the star power you have, I, I think that they need to do something like that because something has what to What if change. we find out that it is Sullivan already? <laughs> oh, that could be. <laughs> that, uh, and, uh, honestly, that, that would probably be worst case scenario because then you're like, well, what do you do? <laughs> like, yeah, what like, do you turn to? The but the only so like, you know what you turn to you have to bring back Phil Kessel that's what you have to turn to, um, but no the 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 thing that is crazy to me is like I feel way more comfortable with about the playing Penguins playing five on five or even four on five than I do about them playing five on four. <laughs> I yeah I I mean it is absolutely ridiculous. Am I wrong? Here's the like. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I don't trust them to produce necessarily offensively shorthanded, but I no, feel but better about. I their expect them to defending. not give up a goal. Yeah, I feel better. About I don't know about that. About like obviously this year they haven't let up as many shorthanded goals, but mm-hmm. in years past, like last year and the year before that, they let up several. Yeah. Here, here's the thing. I said I don't have the answer for the power play, but what I know the answer is not is doing the exact same thing. And I'm not talking about just reshuffling personnel or anything like that. You know, they tried to throw Zahorna and Vinny Hinostroza on the power play unit. Uh, Hinostroza no longer in the lineup as of the last couple of games, but they tried that for a game anyway. Um, I know that the answer is not to continue to do the same thing. And again, not talking about personnel. I'm talking about some type of philosophy or schematic change happening to this power play, the way that they set up 
their entries are awful. If they don't win the opening face-off of the power play, I don't know that they're going to re-enter the offensive zone on that entire power play because the entries have been atrocious since Kessel left. I, I say the top I, unit especially, yeah. The bottom unit yeah. honestly enters the zone better than the top unit does. There, There's not that – like, there's so much talent, but nobody willing to take charge of it. So I, I think that there is a fundamental issue – with this power play that is much deeper than the personnel that is on it. How do you fix that? Again, I don't have the answer to that. I don't know that anybody does or it probably already be happening, but you got to try something different. I don't know what that looks like, but they found a way we've talked about this to play differently defensively. You know, they changed up their four checking scheme. I think Jesse Marshall did a great job of highlighting this, the different system that they've implemented. Um, and I thought they've played a lot better at five V five due to that. Again, mixed results in terms of the games that they're winning. By the way, how stupid is it that the two wins that they have through this stretch are against Vegas and the Leafs? I mean, what <laughs> yeah. the heck? But um, but they, they're they showing that they can definitely play with anybody because of this system that they've implemented. Now it's time to work on this power play and figure out what's going on there. They've been better on the PK this year than last year. I think they're they're stronger at 5v5. The power play is still what's killing them. That's what's been their Achilles heel this year. That is why they are 10, 10, and 1 on the season is because of that power play. Yeah, honestly, if you, if you capitalize on even like... What were they, you, over you, 5 you, on the power play against the Rangers and they lost that game one nothing. I mean, like... If you capitalize on even one more goal in, in a power play per game, that that's that could be the difference of a win and a loss in in, in for the yeah. Penguins. And I, I'm curious about like... How many? If you, if I'm curious, and then obviously we're not going to do this on the show, but maybe, maybe like I could look into it. I'm curious how many games this season have they had power play opportunities where they, if they capitalized on two of them, or maybe even just one of them, how many games would they have flipped, or at least maybe even sent to overtime or something like that? Like how yeah, how how cool, different yeah. would some of the results be? Because yeah, over five against the Rangers, lost one nothing. That was over the past week. Um, lost three to two to the Sabers, being over two on the power play. Um, that was the only. Those are the only one goal losses that they've. Or, well, they lost to the Predators in overtime, which, man, we could have oh, a discussion that is, about that. that uh, is, while being over two on the power play, but that's what I mean, you're losing one yeah. goal games. Because you're not scoring on the power play. You're at least being tied in these games, if not winning them. You're at least getting a point out of them and going to overtime, if not winning them outright, if you're scoring more consistently on the power play. And more consistently isn't even like an absurd percentage. It's literally league average. Yeah. Well, also, other than that Rangers game that I brought up, they're also giving their opponent more power play opportunities than they're getting. Like, I was going through there looking just now since we, our last episode. It's like two opportunities, two opportunities, two opportunities. So, I mean, it, you know, if they went one for two, that's obviously 50%. That would be great if they're going one for two every single night. They're just not getting enough opportunities on the power play really, though, either. Not that I want them with the way that they played on it, but I'm just right. saying there hasn't been a ton of opportunity either. Right. But and the, and the, I think that's that's the problem, too, is like when you get that opportunity, you need to capitalize on it. It's like whenever I they go out on the power play, it's a waste of a two minutes. Like it's it's a it is a hard watch of a two minutes because I know that they're not going to do anything. I have a hard and time honestly, as an opposing or... if you're an opposing fan playing the Penguins and they get a power play, you might not get a shorthanded <laughs> goal, but you shouldn't be scared that they're actually going to score. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, from a production standpoint, you look at the top, it still like looks fine, but it shows show how good they've been at 5v5. The Crosby Gensel Russ line has literally been the most efficient line in hockey at 5v5. Their expected goals are the highest of any line combination. Crosby's got 24 points in 21 games. Same thing with Jake Gensel. Uh, Gino's got 19 points in 21 games. Carlson, 18 points in 21 games. Russ, 17 points in 18 games. Those guys are all still producing. Latang, just 11 points in 21 games, just one goal. But we've talked about this a lot. I think what you've seen with him is him take on a larger responsibility defensively. I think there was a lot of question with bringing in Eric Carlson. Okay, you know, your top two on your right side are both, you know, offensive defensemen. 
who's going to be killing penalties, who's going to take on that defensive responsibility. The answer to that has been Chris Letang, who I think has taken another step in his game defensively. Amazing at his age that he's been able to do that. Credit to his conditioning and his desire to just continue to, to get better. And honestly, I don't know if he's getting enough credit just from like how selfless it is for what he's done this year either. Like we're talking about how impressive it is just from like an on ice perspective, but how about just his willingness to change his role entirely for this team for the betterment? He could have had an ego check. He, he could have said, listen, I'm the, I'm this team's number one defenseman. I'm not getting off the top power play unit. I'm not limiting my minutes. I'm not, I'm, I'm still the number one guy. And clearly he hasn't done that. He's, he has respected and welcomed Eric Carlson into the lineup, which means changing his role a little bit in, in this this uh, defensive unit and also just the team in general. So I think that that is, um, goes to show like, the type of player that Latang has been um, really for his whole career. But it's, it's really on display now, especially in the – I don't want to say the twilight of his career because I still think he's got a lot of good hockey ahead of him, but the, the, the beginning of the twilight of his career. I mean, let's face it, we're, we're getting to, to more it's towards the end now. than we are the beginning. Yeah, so so I think I think that that's, that goes to show the type of player he was. Um, one thing that I, I wanted to bring up too that I wish we could have gotten a little bit more over these some of these past few games, which we got some. anything from Ryan Graves. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, yes, anything from Ryan Graves, but <laughs> I think that over the last couple of weeks where we haven't had um, an episode. I, I think that you started to see a little bit of the second line, not like necessarily playing bad, but just kind of like stalling out, not as hot as they were um, to start out the season. So when you don't have like Malkin or Riley Smith scoring at the rate they were early on, I, I would have liked to have seen some of that bottom six to be able to step up in some of the scoring. Didn't really see that. I mean, you, you have a couple guys like I think Lars Eller ha- is leading the bottom six with three goals. And then you got Nola Chari, who I believe has two, but then nobody else has like, like the highest is one or none for the rest of the guys. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more of a bump in their scoring. If you're going to have a line like the, the second line stall out a little bit over a couple games, but I mean, you saw in the Nashville game, Riley Smith and the Eddie Malkin still have a great connection. If getting Malkin scored a rocket of a goal, I'm not worried about them for the, lo- the season long haul. But it's just when you get in those skids where you'll have a few games where a line goes cold, and yeah. you would like that to be made up for a little bit. And I, I, I don't want to keep this. Na- I don't want to keep this narrative the entire season. But it's hard not to talk about it when you continue to just like you want it, but you're not getting it. Like you, you, you want to see some more productive uh, uh, offensive production from the bottom six, but you're just not getting it at the rate that you'd like to. Yeah, I mean. You know, Noel Atari scored. I thought he had a really good game against Toronto. Scored a goal in that one. A little bit of a re- revenge game for him. I thought Drew O'Connor, who I, I guess we can't consider him a bottom six player because he's not playing in the top six, but yeah. he's looked like he belongs, you know, up there. I think he has a different element to those two lines. Um, but, you know, yeah, I, I, man, I don't know what. I don't know how you are the brother of William Nylander and you have nothing to your game. I mean, Alex Nylander, who I was super high on at one point, I think I just kept buying into the pedigree and thinking this guy would figure out a way to contribute in some capacity. He he offers nothing. I mean, he he skates like he is uh, confident with the puck on his stick. Outside of that, there's nothing. There's nothing there. There's nothing. To I mean, it makes I've got no the perfect sense. example. You, you got Patrick Mahomes, but then you got Jackson Mahomes. One, one's the best quarterback. What I league. honestly thought you were going to say right there was actually like a serious thing. I thought you were going to say like Kasperi Kapanen at his worst. Oh, no, I was like, I was comparing the brothers because because you brought yeah. up like being William yeah, Nylander's brother. No, you got Jackson Mahomes and you got Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> one's the best quarterback in the league and the other's Jackson Mahomes. I, I yeah. Not even the best TikToker. Yeah, I mean. No. By far. Not even I mean, close. dude. I mean, I I, I I can just start naming off TikTokers that are way better than him, but I'm not going. I, I think, to, but I, yeah, could. I think I'm good, and I'm assuming that the audience uh, does not want that to happen either. But yeah, I, I I don't know where you go from here. There's obviously no quick solution to the bottom six. Uh, Jansen Harkins is back in the NHL on the Penguins roster. What does he do? I, I mean, there's so many guys on this team that it's like, what what are they offering to the lineup? Like, I I don't understand what we're doing right now. Uh, but I don't know that there's better replacements in the AHL. But I, going back to the power play, what I know isn't the answer is doing nothing. So if it ends up being you're just rearranging 
you know, furniture or whatever, so be it. But let's take some chances. I would like to see if somebody in the HL can provide more than what Jansen Harkins is doing for the Pittsburgh Penguins. Also, did John Ludwig, uh, did he play before our last episode? Have we talked about him too? Because he, he's played in like five games. Like, did he come back from his concussion? Yeah. Mean, like, like... Yeah. No, like, did he, has he, has he played outside of the first time he, he came up this season since we last talked? Cause he's played in a few games. Right. Yeah. He, you know, yeah, we had, we've had episodes since his debut, but we haven't talked since he came back. Right. Okay. Yeah. Which I, again, I, I another, don't, another I know guy he offers like... something different. Like he wants to play physical, willing to take the body likes to hit people pause is willing to step in and yeah is willing to step in and scrap if he feels like he has to i don't care he's not he's not an nhl defenseman in my mind or at least one in every day is a you know top six guy i i don't see it i don't see it i i mean i know that you know poj is working his way back chad ruwiel is not available i i'm assuming he's i mean poj might be available now he practiced uh, was on a like fourth pairing, but like I, if he's ready to go, why is John Ludwig going to be in the lineup? Like it looks like it's going to be the case. I don't know. Not an NHL defenseman, in my opinion. Can we? Uh, I, I mean, one of the guys that are down in the AHL right now that I'm sure a lot of fans would be eager to see what could happen. Can we just finally get like Sam Poulin to like come up here and play some games? Well, he was injured for a bit. Is he back? Down there, then is he playing? I, I think he's he's back. Okay, okay. Like him and Poost, and then we're both hurt down there at the same time. So, yeah. But like Colin White's down there too, right? I mean, I don't know. Some you got to do something. You got to do something to improve. Got to do something to improve the power play. You got to do something to improve the po- the bottom six. I mean this this team definitely still has its its problems. Um, yeah. They're different than last year's, at least personnel wise, but they're still problems. Yeah. The results are still the results. Should we talk at all about the play in net? I feel like it hasn't been too bad. You know, I like what uh, when Adeltovich has brought it from a backup role, other than wearing a Miles Garrett jersey when he's not in net. Uh, and I yeah, thought Jari, <laughs> Jari, outside of a game against uh, the Devils, I thought has bounced back nicely since his injury as well that caused him to miss just one game. Um, Certainly hasn't been the reason that they're losing games. He's even stole he's that game against the Rangers really upset me because of how well Jari played. Like losing one nothing oh, over yeah. five in the power play with as well as Jari played. But like right now, goal save above expected. The Penguins as a whole are like fourth or fifth in the league right now. And I don't think coming into the season we would have thought that, that would be the case. Yeah, it's really hard for me to complain about the goaltending that the Penguins have gotten. Um especially from I thought the two starts that he's got he's gotten since we last talked with Nadelkovich have been really good. Um and Jari, I think, since we we've, we've last spoken over the last few weeks has been really good as well. It's really just the team in front of them that it's been letting them down. That's that's why they've been losing games is we haven't been losing games to goaltending because there's definitely been times where we can say like the goaltender lost us that game. You haven't really gotten that. You've got some good saves when you needed them. And I, I, I think that the team in front of them is really letting the goalies down for some of the play that they've gotten as of late. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's kind of the reverse, you know, I think last year, if you get better goaltending, we're having a different discussion about the team this year. If you get better play in front of the goaltending, you're having a different discussion about where the team's at. So I don't know. I don't think that there's easy fixes to their problems. Um, but I, I don't know. I still, I just, I can't get it out of my head that eventually this top end talent is going to find a way they're going to will them still to be in a spot. Are they going to make the playoffs? I don't know, but I think they're going to still be end up in the mix to do so because of their top end talent. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we we've seen it time and time again, even last season, like even though he wasn't able to do it, like Sidney Crosby is not going to turn over and, and, and just, uh, wince and die. He is going to fight the rest of the season to drag this team to the playoffs. If he has to, yeah. All right. Anything else? Over a point per game player still, by the way. Just just saying. There it is. 36 years old. That's the anything else. Um, 
All right. Yes. Yeah, so as Tyler mentioned at the beginning of the show, check out year six, rock around the 412. As of the donations that we got this year, we've crossed $30,000 in total raised since we started the mission in 2018. Absolutely insane. This year alone, uh, we've been able, we've been able to adopt 25 children from the Salvation Army's angel tree. They do their yearly thing with the tags off the angel tree. We got 25 of them, at least one local family for sure going to be helped. If you guys continue to donate, maybe we can add a second one on to that. Last to, to donate for the uh, Angel Tree itself, Salvation Army stuff has to wrap up on 12-1, so you got like maybe a day to do so. You got le- um, you have less than 24 hours whenever this video comes out. Yep, crunch time, um, which the link is in the description to do so. But we can take donations up until the 11th of December for around the 412 in general, or uh, rock around the 412 in general, to be able to help out uh, these local families. So please do so. Read the full mission at GoFundMe. The link, again, in the description donate there as well but full mission is there please share you know you never know whose eyes and ears you can put on this thing that's going to be able to donate even if you yourself cannot um so yeah at least 28 kids are going to have their christmas made through rock around the 412 we take great pride in doing this again we are just a vessel we are the people that are able to do it and put it together but everybody that donates out there is really the ones that make it happen and for doing so if you donate at least ten dollars you'll be eligible to win some prizes Penguin tickets, Eric Carlson jersey, Joey Porter Jr. jersey, a Steelers jersey of choice, and uh, is there something? Oh, Mika Fitzpatrick autograph jersey for sure. Mm-hmm. Will there be anything else? Donate and see. We'll see. Um, and then everything custom designs. Our friend Haley Wagner, small business. Her Etsy and Facebook links are down below as well. You can get a custom stocking. You can get custom uh, Christmas gift bag. You can do a lot of different things, clothing, stuff like that. You just can't do hats. So, um, I always like to like real subtly throw that in now instead of making it like a separate statement. You just can't get a hat from her because she doesn't do hats. So separate machine or something along those lines is the reason, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how all that works. All I know is um, we are appreciative of her. We're appreciative of all you that watch or listen to the show. We're appreciative of everybody that donates to rocking around the 412 means the absolute world to us. It's our baby. And uh, we look forward to getting you guys pictures. Uh, the kids opening their Christmas gifts as we try to do every single year as well. So thanks again for Tyler, for Smitty. This has been the Around the 412 Penguin Show. Click on another video popping up right now, and we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye.